This is still TV3 and it's News 360's Time for Mission. Our mission is brought to you by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Inadequate beds for clients at the various chips compounds in the Sisala West District of the Upper West Region has compelled health staff to detain patients on benches. At Jeffy the health centre receives over 20 detentions daily but has only two beds. Bright Nana Amfo reports... Seriously sick persons lie on benches in pain as the community struggles to find beds for the facility. Weak and frail, body taken over by diseases and tender loving care is what is needed. But this is a mirage. The Jefferson Health Center has only two beds. Health staff want to work, and so even in difficult conditions, they give up their best. They, however, provide that health care to patients in very uncomfortable situations. The health center is over 30 years old. The facility is simply overwhelmed by a large growing population. Jefferson is increasing in numbers, and clients who visit here are simply unable to get the kind of treatment they want. They are detained in every single room here. And worst of it all is that they are detained on benches. They come here with pain and yet are made to go through more pain. Over 2,300 clients from eight communities are served here. An average of 20 patients a day are received and detained and so staff are overwhelmed. This place is a health center. At least the detention room, only two beds are there. And the two beds, you can have more, as many as seven clients you need to detain. And apart from the two beds, unless the benches that you use to detain the clients. The district's health delivery system faces serious challenges. Even after going through the pain of lying on benches for days, referring them to the next level remains another difficulty. This is the only transport system stuck here for years. The national ambulances are not working. When you have to refer, you go and stand by the roadside looking for a vehicle to stop to come and pick a labor case. So, we are being challenged in terms of that. Mothers are now complaining, thinking that we are the people who are causing the whole thing. The whole entire subject. There is no means of transport. For district authorities, interventions from the central government is the only way out in improving the situation. Communities might help, but their resources are meagre. Currently, we are putting ourselves to, to see how best we can get at least some improvised beds that we can get at least some student mattresses that we can line up because if you enter there people are being detained on benches we have only two beds and the people average detention is over 20 a day the district health directorate seemed overwhelmed too with the situation inadequate space is a challenge in all health facilities in the district health centers has also been the same similar a situation like the hospital. You know, some of them were uh, 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 put up years back since the 90s, uh, late 80s and early 90s. Very small by the assembly. No space, just one room for primary care services. But the population has grown. Imagine late 80s up to date. The population has increased. So there is congestion everywhere. The district assembly is tackling the health situation from different angles. Though it is working to help immediately, it is also looking at a larger picture. JFC and then Zing Health Centers, we have promised them even the feasibility studies are done, the bill of quantities have been uh, given to the assembly, KTC, my engineer, for us to renovate uh, those things. It was one or two hitches, that is why that one we have not given the award <coughs> letters to the contractors. But plans are far advanced to renovate these two 
health centers. The Sisala West District is poised to improve health delivery for the over 44,000 population, but central government's effort will have to come in to save the situation. Bright Nananfo, TV3, Jeffy all right, so from healthcare, let's look at education. And two basic schools in the Pandai district have received support following TV3 Missions reports. Stanley Niblo reports one of the two schools would also benefit from a three unit classroom block. The Kashilende Basic School was the first to benefit from philanthropists and non governmental organizations after TV3 Mission reported the exploitation of people on farms to raise money to buy desks last year. The Ghana Education Service later provided the school with furniture and persuaded school authorities to abandon the farm. Most parents here have no formal education. Since the beginning of the term, most pupils went to school without books nor pencils. Teachers are worried the attitude is impeding academic work. There are a lot of people who don't even have a size book, not even for the beginning of the term, but only by from coming to school they don't have at all. An international non-governmental organization, Christian Eliminating Barriers for the Liberation of Africa, EBLA, has donated some stationery to the school. The pupils are happy the education has been impacted. At Kachilende, pupils after graduating class 6 do not further their education because there is no junior high school. The NGO Ebla has also promised to build a three-unit junior high school block to serve the continuing pupils. This is not the first time that we will be coming here uh, and it will not be the last time. We are hoping to extend our relationship with the school. The NGO later engaged the parents in a town hall meeting. Discussion centered on improving parents' children relationship for an effective, sustainable education. At the end, parents were convinced and they pledged to make education a priority, but would want the pupils to also give their best to change the community. Assistant Director in Charge of Supervision at the District Education Directorate is confident armed robbery incident will reduce if children are given education. More often than not, we hear of armed robbery cases. If side people had gone to school, none of them would go into that bad business. Kwatape Community School was the next to benefit from Eblesk benevolence. Here, education in its entirety is challenged as it remains one of the schools under trees in the district. Kindergarten pupils have been doing academic work on a dusty floor since the inception of the school seven years ago. Without an office and inadequate teaching aids, one teacher handles four classrooms on rotational basis. This was after two teachers abandoned the school for farming because parents could not afford three cities family fee. Some pupils have not had footwears. A total of 800 exercise books, boxes of crayon, pens, pencils, erasers and sharpeners were donated. A teacher at the Kwatape Community School, Isaac Mboronyame, was grateful for the gesture. What I've seen today it assures me that what you people has done, I will by all means prosper and my children to become uh, future leaders. The NGO eliminating barriers for the liberation of Africa assures stakeholders of a partnership to improve education in the district. Well, that's it for tonight's mission. It was brought to you by Star Ghana with support from Danida UK Aid and the EU.